Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're having a great day. At the end of the last video in our 100 days series, I teased a big, big change for this video. And I stand by that. This is a big deal. You don't want to miss it. Um, this could be an absolute nightmare if you had to fix a mistake caused by this section. Um, this is something that people have wanted in the code for a very long time, and it just it was never a requirement. So let's take a look at what we did here in Article 312. So Article 312 covers cabinets, cutout boxes, and meter socket enclosures. All right, 312.11, enclosures containing switches or overcurrent protective devices. The rules for service conductors passing through enclosures were significantly revised. All right, listen, if you're following along in your code book, and I hope that you are, take your time on this one. Like I said, this is, it's such a small little thing and it uses very, very precise language. And boy, it's easy to miss what happened. Enclosures for switches and overcurrent protective devices can also contain splices taps, feed-through conductors, power monitoring equipment. So can you splice in sort of inside of a panel board enclosure? Yeah, absolutely. Looking at this picture, not a problem, not a violation. How much is too much? Well, you can go to 312.11a. The wiring space in enclosures can contain conductors that feed through, are spliced, or are tapped, as indicated in A1 through A5. And we added a new 5. So this is A. Is this permitted? I mean, it's certainly not going to win any beauty prizes, but probably okay. And let, let's just be honest here. I don't, look, I don't like looking at this thing any more than you do, right? But just be honest. Is it safe? Probably. Yeah, probably, right? Total area of conductors at any cross-section of the enclosure must not exceed 40% of that cross-sectional area. All right, so another uh, good-looking panel board enclosure, right? How many wires are permitted down here, right? Well, it's 40% fill. Now, listen, I'm just going to tell you this right now. You are never going to violate this section. It is not possible. And I know, listen, I've seen some enclosures that were jack-in-the-boxes, right? You're, you're unscrewing it <laughs> with your screwdriver, and you can see the, the cover starting to come out at you, and it's like it's like a jack-in-the-box where... Do, 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 do. Right. Even those are probably not even close to 40% fill. Let's just do the math, okay? Let's say that this is 3 inches, just to make the math easy. 3 inches by 3 inches, okay? If that's the case... 3x3 three three wiring space, that is 9 square inches total. So let's think about that. I mean, that is absolutely huge. So 3.6 inches allowed, right? 9 times 0 0.4. Each 12-gauge wire is 0 0.0133 inch. And hopefully you already see where we're going here, right? So 3.6 available inches divided by 0 0.0133 inch Per conductor means you can have 270 12 gauge wires in the bottom of that can. You ain't gonna violate that, folks, right? So put as many wires in there as you want, as far as the code is concerned. <laughs> Total area of conductors plus splices and taps must not exceed 75% of the cross sectional area of the space in which they're installed. Um, if we're getting close here. You know, I, I don't know, man. I I would have to do the math. I think this is probably okay, and I don't love that. You know, when it comes to just little twist on wire connectors, you're never going to violate 75%. But if you've got actual, you know, lugs like a Polaris or an Ilsco or, you know, one of those types of lugs in there, yeah, that could add up pretty fast, right? So I think it's maybe possible to violate this, but it'd be tough. A3 says the bending space requirements of 314.28A2 must be met if four gauge or larger conductors are spliced. All right, so looking up here, those conductors appear to be you know, right around four gauge, right? So you're going to have to size this like a pull box, right? Using the whole, um, you know, eight times for a straight pull, but this is, for a, this is for an angle pull or a splice. So it would be the six times rule in 314.28A2. You'd have to comply with that. All right. A4. If an enclosure contains feed-through conductors, right? These conductors are feeding through then that's totally fine. But you need a warning label telling people how to shut them off. Now, I don't know, in this 
instance? I mean, do you really need to tell people, hey, stupid, shut the breaker off. That's, you know, <laughs> a foot to your left. You know, hey, listen, that's what the code says. what it says. If you've got conductors, if you've got a, a panel board in the middle of a room and wires come into it, back out of it, and go who knows where, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think if I shut off the main breaker for that panel, I am expecting everything in that enclosure to be dead. And if it's not, that's okay. Just just tell me. Tell me how to make it dead, right? That's what this rule says. Here's the change. Service conductors are not allowed to pass through an enclosure that is not the service equipment. Okay, so 230.7 is the rule that says raceways are not allowed to contain service conductors and non-service conductors, right? So inside of this wireway, if that had both service conductors and feeder conductors, violation, and has been for decades. But let's take a look here. I come up from the bottom with my utility conductors. This is probably a service lateral, right? Or maybe underground service conductors. So we come up, hit the line side of the meter, and then we come down, turn left and turn right. Let's just follow the one to the right. We turn right, and look, we go straight through that enclosure over here to our service rated transfer switch that goes back up, back down, hits this breaker, and supplies a 100 amp panel somewhere inside the building, right? This is a very common application when you have an existing service and you want to add a generator to pick up the entire building, right? This is a very common practice. But here's the problem right there, right where those service conductors pass through that service equipment, that is a violation. Because here's the problem. What if we had a fault between the service conductors and the feeder conductors, right? What if they faulted together? Well, the breaker would trip, right? Well, maybe, right? Maybe it does. But here's the thing. That breaker trips, nothing changes because <laughs> these service conductors are still hot. And if they're faulted to these feeder conductors, they're still energized, right? So now I've got unfused, un, you know, I've got conductors in the building that I can't shut off manually and will not shut off automatically, right? And that's a violation. You've got service conductors going through a building. And I'm here to tell you, you now, if you've ever seen, remember, the utility is there to keep the lights on, not shut them off, right? So when I have a fault with service conductors, it takes a hot minute for that utility primary cutout on the transformer to open because they're there to not lose power, right? They don't want to lose power. So when I have a fault, this thing is energized, arcing, sparking. Those fuses aren't opening, and now those wires are in the building lighting things on fire. So people have wanted this in the code for a long time. Uh, quite frankly, people have thought that it was in the code for a long time, and it never has been. And I always wondered how to make it a code rule to actually say that, because you can't say service conductors and non-service conductors aren't allowed in the same enclosure, because then how would you ever have a service disconnect, right? you got service conductors coming in, feeders going out, same enclosure. But I think they did it perfectly. Service conductors can't pass through an enclosure, right, except for service equipment. And that's exactly what they had there. So great job to uh, Code Making Panel 8. It took a minute, took some revisions to get this right, but I think they absolutely got it right. So there you go. Big, big change in 312.11. All right, everybody. We're going to move over to Article 314 next. I hope you'll join me then. And, of course, I hope you're safe out there. So thanks for uh, joining me so far, and I hope you'll stick with it. See you then.